Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, he, she, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we're going to go through my latest Black Comics TBR, link in the cards to my previous Black Comics TBRs, which then subsequently link to all the reviews with a few key changes. Most notably, up to this point, I've included 10 books per P TBR video, with my, me with me subsequently averaging one book per month. This means that I go through one TBR list in a little under a year, which is not a huge deal, but ending up in January this time around, I asked myself why I didn't just make the TBR 12 books long, so that's what I'm going to do. And probably tweak the title a bit to reflect that it's certainly not a ceiling on how many comics by black creators I can read and review this year, but it is the minimum number I want to highlight. The order is not necessarily indicative of anything. As always, recommend me your favorite black comic titles. Starting with perhaps the longest title, now that I've finished Christopher Priest's run on Black Panther, we are moving along to Reginald Hoodland's first volume, published as Individual Issues, Black Panther 2005, number 1 to 18, and X-Men 1991 numbers 175 to 176. This collected volume comes in at 496 pages long and is rated T+. I have actually read and enjoyed a few of the Black Panther story arcs by Hoodlum before in different bind-ups back when the first movie came out. We shall see if that continues. I decided to start my systematic read-through of the content with Christopher Priest because a lot of vocal fans at the time referred his work. That doesn't seem to be the case with my experience thus far, and I have some theories about why that is, but we shall see. My synopsis is, the synopsis is, quote, Go back to the beginning, as T'Challa's origin is presented in cinematic scope who is Black Panther, and what is the secret history of Wakanda? When social satire meets all-out action as T'Challa's adventures continue, the Panther enters the House of M, an outbreak of strange mutated animals brings Storm and the X-Men to Africa, the Panther teams up with Luke Cage, Blade, Brother Voodoo, and Monica Rambeau to take on the undead. But every king needs a queen, and so T'Challa embarks on his most dangerous quest yet to wed the love of his life. Which of the world's greatest superhero women will say I do? End quote. Uh, then, for something completely different, I want to finally pick up Porkcraft, the funny book Fundamentals of Living Well on Less by C. Spike Trotman and art by Diana Nock. Published by Iron Circus Comics in 2012, this volume is 168 pages long. I have followed Trotman's journey as a comics creator and now publisher for a number of years now. I also reviewed her erotic bisexual comic Yes Roya back in 2020, so check that out in the cards if you're 18 plus and that sounds interesting. The summary of Porecraft is, quote, the ultimate comic book guide to practical urban and suburban frugality. Whether you're new to independent living, a recent college graduate, or just downshifting to a simpler lifestyle, Porecraft can help you with everything from finding a home finding a hobby, dinner, to debt relief, education, to entertainment. So get ready. It's time to cut your expenses. Or just make sure they never pile up. End quote. Which also just seems like a very 2023 read anyway, so let's see what we can glean. Leapfrogging into yet another completely different sort of story, book three on this TBR is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, a graphic novel by Kwame Mbalia, and Olivia Stevens, a middle grade mythology published by Rick Warden presents in 2022. The summary is, quote, seventh grader Tristan Strong feels anything but strong ever since he failed to save his best friend when they were in a bus accident together. All he has left of Eddie is the journal his friend wrote stories in. Tristan is dreading the month he's going to spend on his grandparents' farm in Alabama, where he's been sent to heal from the tragedy. But on his first night there, a sticky creature shows up in his bedroom and steals Eddie's notebook. Tristan chases after it. Is that a doll? And a tug of war ensues between them, underneath a bottle tree. In a last attempt to wrestle the journal out of the creature's hands, Tristan punches the tree, accidentally ripping open a chasm into the mid-pass, a volatile place with a burning sea, haunted bone ships, and iron monsters that are hunting the inhabitants of this world. Tristan finds himself in the middle of a battle that has left black American folk heroes Johnny Henry and Bra Rabbit exhausted. In order to get back home, Tristan and these new aliens will need to entice the god Anansi, the weaver, to come out of hiding and seal the hole in the sky. But bartering with the trickster Anansi always comes at a price. Can Tristan save this world before he loses more of the things he loves? Find out by diving into the stunning graphic novel adaption of the original book. End quote. Then we have Concrete Park. Park, volume 1 and 2 by Erica Alexander, Tony Perrier, and Robert Alexander, 
published in 2014 and 2015 by Dark Horse. Page count totals at 232. The summary for volume one is, quote, Earth's outcast, exiled to a distant desert planet and forgotten, will either destroy each other with gang violence or find a path to redemption that will create something entirely new. Concrete Part, a dark, sexy sci-fi saga by Tony Perrier, screenwriter of Eraser, and Erica Alexander, living single, is filled with unforgettable protagonists, a colorful supporting cast, redemption, romance, and non-stop action presented in an exceptional, vibrant style. End quote. Book number five on the TBR is going to be Birth of a Nation by Aaron McGruder, Reginald Hoothland, and Kyle Baker. 137 pages long and published by Crown Publishing Group in 2004. The summary is, quote, this scathingly hilarious political satire produced from a collaboration of three of our funniest humorists answers the burning question, would anyone care if East St. Louis seceded from the Union? East St. Louis, Illinois, the inner city without an outer city, is an impoverished town so poor that Fred Fredericks, its idealistic mayor, starts off election day by collecting the city's trash in his own minivan. But the mayor believes in the power of democracy and rallies his fellow citizens to the polls for the presidential election, only to find hundreds of them turned away for trumped-up reasons. Even sweet old Miss Jackson, not to mention the mayor himself, is denied vote because her name turns up on a bogus list of felons. The national election hinges on Illinois' electoral votes, and as a result, the mass disenfranchisement of East St. Louis, a radical right-wing junta led by a dim-witted Texas governor, seizes the Oval Office. Prodded by the shady black billionaire and old friend John Roberts, Fredericks devises a radical plan of protest. East St. Louis will secede from the Union. Robert opens an offshore bank, albeit in the heart of the U.S., to finance the newly liberated country, and suddenly East St. Louis becomes the Switzerland of the American heartland. Flush with money, it also begins to attract a motley circus of idealistic young militants, OPEC-funded hitmen, CIA operatives, tabloid reporters, and AWOL black servicemen eager to protect and serve the new nation. Problems set in almost immediately, controversies raised over the name and national anthem of the new country, they decide on the Republic of Blackland, with an anthem sung to the tune of the theme from Good Times, and local thug Roscoe becomes a warlord and turns his gang into a paramilitary force. When the U.S. military begins to move in, Fredericks is forced to decide whether his protest is worth taking all the way. Birth of a Nation starts with a scenario drawn from the botched election of 2000 and spins it into a brilliantly absurd work of sharply pointed satire. Along the way, the authors lay into a host of hot social and cultural issues, skewering white supremacists, black nationalists, and the everyone in between. Drawing real blood and real laughs in equal measure in this riotous stand-up of American politics. End quote. Then we have Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith. I've seen a lot of positive reviews of this comic and am very much looking forward to picking it up ASAP. Published in 2022 by Chronicle Books, it runs 192 pages long. Summary is, quote, Wash Day Diaries tells the story of four best friends, Kim, Tanisha, Devine, and Cookie, through five connected short stories that follow these young women through the ups and downs of their daily life in the Bronx. The book takes its title from the Wash Day experience shared by black women everywhere of setting aside all plans and responsibilities for a full day of washing, conditioning, and nourishing their hair. Each short story uses hair routines as a window into the four characters' everyday lives, and how they care for each other. Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith originally kickstarted their critically acclaimed award-winning Slice of Life mini-comic Wash Day inspired by Rouser's own Wash Day ritual and their shared desire to see more comics featuring the daily lived experience of young black women. Wash Day Diaries includes an updated full-color version of its original comic, which follows Kim, a 26-year-old living in the Bronx, as the book's first chapter and expands into a graphic novel with short stories about these vibrant and relatable new characters. In expanding the story of Kim and her friends, the authors pay tribute to Black sisterhood through portraits of shared yet deeply personal experiences of Black hair care. From self-care to spilling the tea at an hours-long salon appointment to healing family rifts, the stories are brought to life through beautifully drawn characters and different color palettes reflecting the mood in each story. At times touching, quiet, triumphant, and laugh-out-loud funny, the stories of Wash Day Diaries pay a loving tribute to Black joy and the resilience of Black women. End quote. Book number seven is going to be Quince Credibly, Volumes 1 and 2 by Rodney Barnes, Selena Espiritu, and Kelly Fitzpatrick. 
published in 2019 and 2021 by Only Press. This duo rocks in at 288 pages and is apparently part of the Catalyst Prime universe. Summary of Volume 1, quote, Invulnerability is a pretty useless superpower if you've only got a 100-pound frame to back it up. That's what Quentin West's life became when he went from small guy who got beat up to small guy who can't get hurt after the meteor shower dubbed the event gifted him the power of invulnerability but no other powers to complement it. But there's more to Quinn than meets the eye, and after some encouragement from his new mentor, a local New Orleans-based superhero named Glow, Quinn realizes that he can use his quirky hobby of creating Rube Goldberg devices to outsmart the opposition. But being a hero paints a target on your back, and Quinn's got to risk it all to join the ranks of the superheroes he looks up to. It's a good thing he can take a punch. End quote. Then we have Noir is the New Black, an anthology published via Kickstarter and Fair Square Comics in 2021. A 136 page collection. The summary is quote, unhinged, unfiltered, unstoppable. This is Noir is the New Black, 40 black creators delivering 16 noir stories in a unique way for the first time. The most successful African American comic book creators like David F. Walker, Brandon Thomas, Brandon Easton, Melody Cooper, M.D. Bright, and Stephen, and Stephen Harries, as well as a new generation of writers and artists of color from all around the world, such as Karen S. Darbo, Walt Barna, Marcus Williams, Quinn McGowan, Roxy Hayes, Greg Burnham, and many more are banding together for a unique anthology of 100% creator-owned black noir comic stories. End quote. Book number nine for this TBR is Jalia a West African fantasy epic by Juni Ba. Published by TKO Studios in 2021, it runs 176 pages long. The summary is, quote, Inspired by West African folklore and stories handed over centuries, this unique graphic novel follows the adventures of Manso, last prince of a dying kingdom, and Awa, his loyal Jalia, or royal storyteller, as they journey to meet the great wizard who destroyed their world, and then withdrew into his tower, never to be seen again. On their journey, they'll cross paths with friends and foe from myth and legend alike and revisit the traditions, tales, and stories that give birth to their people and nurture them still. But what dark secret lies at the heart of the stories and what purpose do their tellers truly serve? End quote. Then we have What We Don't Talk About by Charlotte Christensen, a young adult contemporary romance published by Avery Hill Publisher in 2020. It's a slightly odd 108 pages long. The summary is, quote, Adam and Farai are an interracial couple that have been together for two years. Farai has finally persuaded Adam to introduce her to his parents, but the visit to the in-laws turns out to be a horrible experience for Farai. Several situations during the introductory dinner make her feel uneasy and ostracized. When confronted about this experience, Adam tries to play down the whole situation and does not show any understanding for his partner's concern. This puts a further strain on their relationship and Fry starts to wonder if she can be with a man whose family does not accept her and who is not willing to face the difficulties related to an interracial relationship. Examining important contemporary issues of race, bigotry, and the difficulty that interracial couples face, what we don't talk about is the debut graphic novel from a burgeoning comics talent. End quote. Rounding the corner to the final two books in this 2023 TBR, we have Iyanu, Child of Wonder, Volume 1 by Royo Okupe, published by Unique Studios in 2021. It's 110 pages long. I previously read and reviewed EXO, Volumes 1 and 2, plus Malaika, Warrior Queen, Part 1, both by Royo Okupe. All these books are part of the same universe, I think, so that's also always of interest to me. The summary, quote, Iyanu, a teenage orphan with no recollection of her past, suddenly discovers that she has abilities that rival the ancient deities told in the folklore of her people. It is these abilities that are the key to bringing back an age of wonder. Iyanu begins her journey to save the world on the brink of destruction. The corrupt, cursed, wildlife, and strange divine beasts are determined to destroy humanity unless Iyanu can stop them. End quote. And finally, we have Quantum and Woody by Priest and Bright, Volume 1, Clang, published in 2015 by Valiant. And not the 2013 version by James Asmus. I'll apparently have to read the, this digitally over Libby, which is far from my first choice, but only coming in at 208 pages should be easier to get through than the Complete Black Panther by Christopher Priest volumes were. Summary is, quote, The complete collected adventures of the original world's worst superhero team, now in trade paperback, representing the seminal series from legendary creators Christopher Priest, Black Panther, Deadpool, and M.D. Bright, 
Green Lantern, Iron Man, one volume at a time. Discover the groundbreaking series that Kotaku calls, quote, one of the funniest superhero comics ever, with an all new edition collecting Quantum and Woody's origin and disastrous early adventures. Sometimes the best friends make the worst partners. Once inseparable, childhood friends Eric Henderson and Woody Van Shelton haven't seen each other in years, reunited by the mysterious deaths of their research scientist fathers. The unlikely duo find themselves stuck together all over again when a catastrophic lab accident transforms their bodies into pure energy energy that will completely dissipate if they don't clang their control bands together every 24 hours now armed with an array of high-tech gadgets and two horribly mismatched personalities and a goat for a sidekick this pair of misfits has decided to set the world straight as the world's worst superhero team, Quantum and Woody, if they can manage to quit fighting each other first, end quote. Which concludes this year's Black Comics TBR. That said, before we conclude, let's highlight a few honorable mentions, aka the books that were originally on this TBR and that I read since finishing my last TBR, but decided it should make room for other books, as this is now my 2023 TBR. First off, we have what turned out to be my favorite young adult DC title so far, namely Nubia, Real One by L.L. McKinney and Robin Smith, which I ended up rating 5 out of 5 stars. Link in the description. Then we have After the Rain, originally by Nettie Okorafor, adapted to graphic novel by Josh Jennings and Dave Brame. I found this a very interesting 4 out of 5 stars. Review linked in the description. Which does bring us to the end of the end. Bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.
And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.